Hi everyone, Tala Falaba, and thank you for that introduction. I'm not an expert, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but um, firstly, I would like to thank um, John and the team for getting us out here. Awesome stuff, guys. Uh, I'm Ebony, she's Toa, and we're from Sky Air Pacific. So just the background on Sky Air Pacific, we're a solutions company. We use uh, technology to provide solutions for our community in Samoa and the Pacific. It is a Samoan family founded, funded, owned and operated uh, company. We've been operating for over five years and we're registered in Samoa, Solomon Islands, Wanuatu and Tonga. And we are a vehicle tracking, GISRS, ICT and real estate company. So here are the flags of the countries we're in. And this map is, I did not make this map, it's from Google. And <laughs> but yeah, lucky the person put the flags there, so I don't take credit for this one. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, the circled ones are where we are, and New Zealand down here. Uh, so I'll be presenting on uh, the, using GIS tools to assist the Apia water catchment um, after Cyclone Gita. Uh, following Category 1 Cyclone Gita and its accompanying damages, the Ministry of Natural Resources in Samoa and through UNDP, United Nations uh, Development Program, uh, recruited SkyAir to conduct a spatial imagery acquisition to inform their post assessments. Uh, the aim of the project was to provide context in the form of spatial imagery and quantifiable data to facilitate investigation into the cause impacts and future risk in light of Cyclone Gita. Uh, it ran from uh, the 27th of February to the 30th of April, but extended to the 18th of May because of uh, drone uh, permits, uh, the weather, and having to get permission from the people to uh, access their private properties. <laughs> uh, this is the area. This is in Apia. And from left to right, uh, that's Fulua Sol uh, River catchment, Ngasngase, uh, Lomata Apaula, and Vaisingano. So this is like the overall imagery that we captured. And the total area captured was 57.91 square kilometers, with Vaisingano catchment being the biggest of 26.6, and Lomata Apaula the smallest, which was 2.17. Uh, the deliverables, uh, there were three outputs we had to uh, provide, which was the first one, digital imagery and point cloud of 2018 after Gita, uh, the capacity building and reporting. For the first one, we also rectified and corrected uh, the control to control points and resampled the 2018 to the same resolution of the 2015 LIDAR data that they provided for us to do the comparison. And we also did the capacity building, which was uh, training of relevant staff in the use of the products as a monitoring assessment and reporting tool. And that was about 20 of the staff of the Ministry of Natural Resources from different divisions. And also we produced a report on the works that we did uh, the methodology, we divided it into three um, parts, which was the data collection, data processing, and the analysis. For the first one, data collection, we undertook aerial mapping of the catchment areas using a DJI uh, Phantom 4 Pro drone and the SenseFly EB fixed wing. And the resolution provided was uh, two to eight centimeters ground sample distance. And well, for data processing, we use Pix4D um, Mapper and Global Mapper. I know that's not open source, but this was before we discovered last tools, late to the party, and QGIS uh, 2.218. And for the processing and analysis, we analyze vegetation, tree damage, landslides, roads, and generated uh, terrain, surface, and border network models. Also also rectified the images to adjust for camera tilt uh, perspective to get a uh, true area view, so they will be able to measure true distances, and also rectified the images to ground control points. 
So as you can see there, so our methodology highlights, um, for accurate comparison, we resampled the 2015 imagery that the ministry provided for us to the same, uh, actually, no, we resampled our imagery to their imagery. So, uh, so their one was 20 centimeters, so we had to uh, adjust ours so that it'll allow, um, what do you call it, accurate comparison between the two. So on the left there is um, the 2015 imagery that they provided. And after Gita, this was the imagery that we provided. And these are more examples. You can see um, the vegetation difference between the two. And here, same thing. So uh, another highlight was um, combining and compressing the data, taking into account local capacity. Um, so we combined and compressed uh, the imagery into ECW, so that would be easier for them to load uh, because we don't, they didn't have much storage on the devices. We compressed all the imagery and the LiDAR imagery that they provided and at the point cloud, point cloud imagery that we gave them so that it would be easier for them to handle and store. We also, this was a big one for us. Uh, because they use map info, we're trying to get them to use Q. So we packaged all the process data into an easy to use our QGIS um, desktop package. So those are all the layers and all the data that we provided them. And lastly, yeah, my one's short, her one's longer. Uh, some of the recommendations that we um, gave them was to set up a central portal because when we had to get the data from them, they had to get it from different places and it took a while, that's why we had to extend, it took a while to uh, bring the data together so that we could use it. So uh, create a central portal and also using local knowledge. Sky being a local company, we did experience the floods and we understand what is at stake. So knowing the local area enables um, faster response time uh, to complete the project and also faster response in terms of local support. We can just drive down the road instead of getting someone from overseas and stuff. So yeah, um, my last slide is to acknowledge uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources in Samoa for trusting Sky Eye to do the job and United Nations Development Program for the funding. Uh, James Atherton, uh, that provided extensive uh, environmental GIS advice, and Dr. Catherine Ball from Australia, provided advice on environmental recommendations based on SCIA's data and imagery analysis. And also our team, uh, our CTO, Unasa Numnesa Saili, our John Pilot and GIS officer, Aaron Salofa, and Anna Maria, our GIS geotechnology officer. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Toa, um, and the project I'll be talking about is the Allah addressing system. So for some of you who don't know, Samoa does not have an addressing system in place like many of our neighboring um, Pacific countries. So the aim of this project is solving the problem of no street addresses in Samoa. Thousands of people in Samoa have long relied on directional descriptions in order to find locations due to the lack of physical addresses. Basically, finding addresses in Samoa is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, we are currently using villages as a reference point in finding locations. However, when you describe um, imprecise and chunky descriptions over the phone to fire departments or hospitals during emergencies, it can be very problematic. So, so, why is this even a problem in the first place? To simply put it, the infrastructure is not there, unlike well-mapped places like we have here in New Zealand. Um, this is firstly due to the irregularity of our land parcels. We do not have street names for our roads. Many households do not have access to official roads, and 80% of our land in Samoa is customary land. It makes it really hard to implement government services like emergency responses, census surveys, immunization programs, deliveries, transport pickup, and so forth. And we are at risk of 
losing out on future tech such as smart homes or the internet of things to name a few, contributing to limiting the digital transformation of Samoa. Since this is a community focused project, we wanted to get the input of our people and the opinion of our people into this project. So here we will see that the community are well on board with the need of an addressing system in Samoa. One of my favorite highlights and what you will see here is that, for example, Meline here says, our country is developing, street addresses should be introduced. Here Lisa says it would save her a lot of money from traveling um, to town if she had a mailbox in place, while Junior emphasized that people will easily find their relatives' addresses or just to simply find locations. And what we will see here is the community are well on board with the need to have an addressing system in place. Our solution. The solution we built, designed, and developed is a geospatial-based addressing system called the Allah addressing system. Allah in the Samoan language means pathway. So what we basically did was cover all of Samoa's landmass with addressing points, each of these addressing points has a unique number placed in sequential order, which we refer to as an ALA number, which can be then used for, an, for addressing. This ALA number can be placed at your front door or the front gate, for example, depending on the owner of the property uh, using tags. And, see, and since these points are placed all over Samoa's landmass, even now someone's water tank can have a addressing, uh, an addressing point, which is very important for uh, government implemented projects. On a larger scale, uh, how we created it was we created two by two kilometer grids, each with a numerical value. And in total, we created up to 831 two by two kilometer grids um, covering all of Samoa's landmass. Within each of those two by two kilometer grids, it was divided into a thousand by thousand columns and rows. Scaling it down even more, within those columns and rows, is a two square meter point with a fixed and unique value, as I mentioned earlier, referred to as the ALA number. And what it means by unique is that it won't be repeated again. So each ALA number has a XY coordinate, a unit number if it's a multiplex building, a village, postal code, name of the owner, uh, sorry, name of the owner, um, road name, once that's been established in our country, and also the country name. Along with the ALA number, we've displayed it together with the village to kind of make it more comprehensible to our people since they do not know what an uh, ALA number is. So how would one get a ALA number or for the ALA addressing system? You can easily get this through the, the user's GPS device or by either pinpointing it on the map. It, extract, it, it extracts the nearest ALA number to that location of interest using an automatic call through API called get nearest Allah. This system, uh, so this is where QGIS comes in. We built the entire system using QGIS uh, version three and above. And it is currently been stored on a Postgres, PostGIS geodatabase on a virtual machine on AWS on Amazon. And it can easily be accessed using a RESTful API for any third um, party applications. So far, we have implemented um, the ALA addressing system into Samoa's first e-commerce platform called MOA. For those that do not know what MOA is, MOA is a virtual online market connecting community vendors to buyers. So kind of like Uber Eats, Amazon, and PayPal all rolled into one, into one platform. And it has been well implemented in finding buyer and vendor locations for self-pickup and delivery services. So from the short span since it's been announced and integrated into the Mawa platform in August just this year, it has been well received from the public. As much as we take in the opinion of the public, we also wanted to show what the feedback of the public was towards the system that we built directly for them. Um, in this case, we received positive feedback, also some confused reactions. We've been asked about what an ALA number is and questions on how like it works. And once people kind of understood, they loved the idea of just remembering three to nine digits for their home addresses, similar to remembering a phone number or a mobile number. Uh, it has currently been stored on a geospatial database, as I mentioned earlier, and is accessible through APIs, OPDCs, or OGE standards for any third-party applications. Um, so um, at the time being, uh, SkyEye is currently part of the overall committee for developing an, address, an official addressing system for Samoa, 
As part of this committee, we hope and the plan is to have the system implemented as our most permanent official addressing system since it's already been built and it's already and it can easily be integrated um, or just as a temporary solution since there is a need for it. So the committee has given street names for all of our roads and street addresses, which will probably take some time. Um, to close off, I wanted to say Samoa has only, com only recently come to realize the difficulties and, sh and shrug struggles of not having an addressing system in place, which is why when we designed ALA and built it, we knew a holistic approach was critical. So addresses are something people mainly take for granted, but without these simple descriptions where, where you live, a person cannot access critical services like mail, deliveries, emergency services, or water um, registration. And now through ALA, Samo can now solve the problem of, this, of, of trying to access these critical services as well as participate in the global economy as Samo enters into the digital transformation era. Um, I just wanted to say how cool it was we were able to use um, open, open source GIS, in this case um, QGIS and Postgres, to build an entire addressing system for our country. So how cool and amazing was that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the Fast 4G committee for organizing such an amazing successful event as well as making it possible for us to also attend through the travel grant program. Um, anyways, if you want more info, sorry, on the projects I mentioned, you can visit Sky Eye's website or contact us via Facebook or email or just come talk to us um, in person or our contact info is up there. Uh, thank you so much, Fafitai Lava, and looking forward to seeing all of you in Fiji next year. <laughs> Time for questions. Anyone? All right. Hi. It's more of a curiosity than a question. Why the two per two meters grid for the ALA? Is there a reason? It's not like a 10 per 10 meters resolution one by one. I don't know. Is there a precise reason? If you know. <laughs> um, okay, to answer that question, um, the person who came up with this idea was actually a CTO, um, Ungasa. Um, so I think the idea he had for the two by two grid is, um, I think you guys are all aware of what three words is, and that is three by grid, uh, three by three. Uh, so you, I think he tried to kind of limit it to down in a sense of like um, size wise to make it kind of like uh, more easy to kind of pinpoint the location of that, yeah, the user or anyone that's using the system. I hope that answers the question. Okay. <laughs> Actually, just on that note, I was wondering, did you evaluate things like what free words sort of leading up to this and what led you away from that? To your oh, okay. Um, yes, we... Um, so the concept kind of built of what three words was, what three words is and that grid system, but it's not really referring to what three words is in a sense because as what three words is, you, you use random three words to kind of find a location. As for this, it's... Uh, what's it called? It's, it's a numerical... Um, um, what's it called? Uh, sequence order. So uh, I think, oh, okay, Spe speaking of which, we, ha I think, is there any Tongans in the room at the moment? No? Okay, okay. Um, Tonga employed the what three words system into the post, uh, I think the post office for delivering uh, for mail and stuff. Uh, and they had came across some problems. And from that, we learned that maybe we should kind of build a system of our own, which is kind of uh, accommodating to our people in a sense. I hope, yeah, yeah. That answers. <laughs> Does the grid uh, number have a link back to a spatial coordinate, a latitude, longitude, some on map grid so it can be used for navigating? Yes, it does. This, uh, I mentioned earlier that each ALA number, the either, uh, each ALA number has an XY coordinate. So this coordinate is fixed. So once you have an ALA number, for example, and you enter this into, if, it's, if we integrate it into Google for navigation, it will, yeah, directly take you to that point, uh, that fixed point of x and y coordinate, yeah, for that ALA number. I think, yeah, is that, does that answer your question? Okay. Got time for one more question. Ask her. 
<laughs> Why me? <laughs> Sorry, another address. Another address question. Is the is the post office and the bank are they on board with this addressing system? Are they willing to use it? Um, so far, we only just built it this year. The concept came up when um, our CTO uh, had the idea that maybe we could actually just build it ourselves using open source. Uh, so we're looking at maybe approaching them sometime soon. But I think it would be a good system, and every from everything, uh, sorry, from everyone I've heard that's heard of this, they are willing. They're very happy to kind of um, be on board with it. Yeah. Yeah. Our prime minister's on board. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. We're part of the committee. <laughs> we're we're part of the committee. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs>